Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. In this group of lectures uh, consisting of several parts, I shall describe the quantum mechanics associated with the hydrogen atom. The solution of the Schrodinger equation, I will give you the uh, results. The solution of the Schrodinger equation uh, has its first major achievement in arriving at the spectra of the hydrogen atom which were known for many decades before that. And it is a spectra of the hydrogen atom which prompted Niels Bohr to came up with his first model of quantizing the energy and quantizing the angular momentum of an atom. Schrodinger equation of course does this using his prescription and the wave function and we shall see some of the details in uh, the uh, calculation of the energies and in the calculation of probabilities of the electrons and so on. So, this is part 1 of the quantum mechanics of hydrogen atom and uh, in the solution of this equation h psi is equal to E psi where now psi is 3 dimensional Cartesian coordinate. We do use a classical starting point of the nucleus with an electron somewhere and the nucleus having a positive charge plus z e z is 1 and the electron with a minus charge and a distance of r. I shall not describe this as a two body problem even though that is the right way of doing it the two body problem and then remove the center of mass from the two body problem and study only the relative motion of the two particle system which in this case the relative mass for the or the reduced mass for the two particle system is the mass of the electron times the mass of the proton divided by the mass of the electron plus that of the proton which is approximately the mass of the electron divided by the times mass of the proton divided by the mass of the proton since m p is much much greater than m e and therefore, mu turns out to be approximately m e when you cancel the m p. Sorry, we, we shall worry about making that approximation and write the mass as nothing but the mass of the electron. Therefore, we needed the Hamiltonian for the electron. So, let us assume that the nucleus is stationary does not contribute to the overall kinetic energy of the atom that is already there in the center of mass which is not considered here. Therefore, if you write to the kinetic energy and the potential energy operator for the hydrogen atom it will be uh, in terms of the operators it will be p square 1 by 2 m e minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r which is the classical coulombic uh, energy of interaction between the positive and the negative charge. And this p square which is an operator is given by p x square plus p y square plus p z square the three components of the momentum in a coordinate system which is probably fixed in the nucleus itself for arguments and then of course, p x is replaced by the derivative operators. So, that the Hamiltonian becomes minus h bar square by 2 m e dou square by dou x e square plus dou square by dou y e square plus dou square by dou z e square where these are the coordinates of the electron with respect to that origin and then you have the potential energy minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r. 
and r is in principle greater than 0 and less than or equal to infinity. At infinity of course, the Coulombic interaction is 0. Therefore, here the boundary includes the entire three dimensional world, the whole universe. So, the boundary is r explicitly x is from minus infinity to plus infinity, y is from minus infinity to plus infinity and also z is from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, this is the three dimensional region and the volume element that we talk about for the particle for the electron probability is the psi is the volume element is dx dy dz and then the probability is psi x e y e z e absolute square d x d y d z as the probability of finding the electron in the region or in the cube between x e and x e plus d x e y e and y e plus d y e and z e and z e plus d z e. This is the three dimensional Cartesian coordinate representation for the hydrogen electron problem, the nucleus electron problem. Instead of Cartesian coordinates, in the case of hydrogen atom, one uses spherical polar coordinates. And the reason for that is that if you look at the hydrogen atom, the potential energy is spherically symmetric. Therefore, the important contribution to the stability of the hydrogen atom which is the, the binding energy between the, uh, the two Coulombic charges being spherically symmetrical, the system is better described using the spherical polar coordinates which if you recall uh, have three variables, the radius of the sphere and then the polar angles theta and phi on the sphere. The standard relations for these are x is equal to r sin theta cos phi and y is r sin theta sin phi and z is r cos theta. These are the equations for the transformation between polar and uh, Cartesian coordinates and the inverse transformation is of course r is square root of x square plus y square plus z square and if you take the ratio of x by y or sin theta cancels off and you have uh, cot phi or phi is tan inverse y by x and the last relation is theta which is given in terms of tan inverse square root of x square plus y square divided by z. Okay. So, the coordinate transformation allows you to either use the spherical or the Cartesian coordinate by using the relationship between them and this one animation gives you the relation or the visualization of the spherical polar coordinate system and the values. Let me play the animation. Here the relation between the Cartesian and the spherical system is given for a given one value of r, the radius of a sphere and you can see that if you fix a polar axis called the z axis, then the polar angle theta is the angle theta varying from 0 to pi as shown by these different radii. So, that is a variation of theta and theta varies from 0 to pi only and the other angle is of course, the azimuthal angle phi which is perpendicular in a plane perpendicular to this and if you rotate this arc semi arc by 2 pi you generate the surface of the sphere. So, that is the, the azimuthal angle phi with respect to a chosen x axis.
Okay. So, that is a spherical coordinate system in which you can see the variation in theta given by these the different arcs and the value of phi corresponding to each one of these arcs starting from the x axis here at uh, uh, some arbitrary point and then going around the x axis to the plus y to the minus x to the minus y and back you have 2 pi. Therefore, if we recall our lecture component r varies from 0 to infinity being the radius of the sphere the, the sphere is from 0 radius to all over the universe and theta varies from 0 to pi as the as the polar angle varying from 0 to pi as you have seen with respect to the z axis and the phi which goes around the circle in 2 pi phi is 0 to 2 pi. And these are relations in parallel to the x, y, z all going from minus infinity to plus infinity in the Cartesian axis in taking care of the, the whole universal space. Therefore, this these are the limits and dx, dy, dz which is a volume element in Cartesian coordinate space will have to be expressed in terms of the volume elements in spherical polar coordinate system and that is given by r square d r sin theta d theta d phi. Those of you who are not familiar with this transformation must go back and look at the coordinate transformation and the simple differentials expressed from one coordinate to the other and the relations are given by what is known as the Jacobian, the magnitude of the Jacobian the Jacobian being the partial derivative of x with respect to r, x with respect to theta and x with respect to phi and uh, the partial derivative of y with respect to r, with respect to theta and with respect to phi and likewise the partial derivative with respect to z with of z with respect to r and with respect to theta with respect to phi the determinant of this multiplied by d r d theta d phi is this is called the Jacobian and this is an elementary transformation matrix that transforms volume elements from one coordinate system to another coordinate system and this Jacobian with the magnitude has the r square sin theta with the d r d theta d phi. Therefore, when you calculate the volume elements and when you calculate the probability is using spherical polar coordinate system, if you are using Cartesian coordinates transform the relation from Cartesian to the polar and these are the mathematical formulas already well known and derived from elementary uh, differential algebra calculus. Keep this in mind. Therefore, now we have this Hamiltonian expressed in terms of minus h bar square by 2 m e dou square by dou x e square plus dou square by dou y e square plus dou square by dou z e square minus h uh, z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or this needs to be changed to polar coordinates spherical polar coordinates. Okay. That is not a trivial exercise, but it is not a very hard exercise. The derivatives for example, dou by dou x of any function of x, y, z are expressed in another coordinate system like r theta phi if we have to express psi in terms of r theta phi. The derivatives are expressed using the partial derivatives of the coordinates with respect to the new coordinates. So, for example, dou by dou x of psi if you wanted to write the appropriate wave function in the polar coordinate namely psi x y z is replaced by the corresponding substitution of the x and y and z using r theta phi using this function, then there is a very simple partial derivative chain rule 
which tells you how to calculate dou psi by dou x as nothing other than dou by dou r with dou r by dou x derivative plus dou theta by dou x dou by dou theta plus dou phi by dou x dou by dou phi acting on the wave function psi or theta phi. So, this is the transformation of the derivative form of the Cartesian coordinate into the corresponding polar coordinates. And of course, you can calculate dou r by dou x, dou theta by dou x and dou phi by dou x from the inverse relations that you already have, already have that. Okay. From this you can calculate the derivative of r with respect to x, y and z, the derivative of phi with respect to x, y and z and the derivative of theta with respect to x, y and z. Therefore, the partial derivatives that you need to calculate for expressing the kinetic energy in spherical polar coordinate system involves three such quantities namely dou square by dou x square which is operating this once more, but being careful that the terms contain already r theta and phi and therefore, the partial derivatives have to be taken carefully and you have to do the same thing for dou square by dou y square and dou square by dou z square. Okay. Therefore, let me summarize this particular part of the lecture with the corresponding expressions namely dou psi by dou y as dou r by dou y dou by dou r plus dou theta by dou y dou by dou theta plus dou phi by dou y dou by dou phi acting on the wave function psi of r theta and phi and similarly dou psi by dou z as dou r by dou z dou by dou r plus dou theta by dou z dou by dou theta plus dou phi by dou z dou by dou phi acting on the corresponding wave function psi or theta phi. These are the derivative equivalents and you calculate likewise the dou square terms, the dou square by dou y square terms and the dou square by dou z square term. So, the summary of doing that calculation and if you are doing it for the first time about 2 to 3 hours is what the time that you have to give in order to add all these terms and cancel and uh, arrive at the final form. But I will write the final magic form that everybody uses for solving the hydrogen atom Hamiltonian in polar spherical coordinates. The Hamiltonian is minus h bar square by 2 m e. one by r square dou by dou r of r square dou by dou r plus one by r square sin theta dou by dou theta sin theta dou by dou theta plus one by r square sin square theta dou square by dou phi square all of which is the transformation of the derivatives to the spherical polar form and therefore, this is nothing but the kinetic energy term in terms of the spherical polar coordinates with the potential energy minus z e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r and the equation that you are looking for solving is the h psi or theta and phi is equal to e psi or theta and phi instead of the h psi x y z in terms of e psi x y z. Okay. The wave functions are different in the different polar different coordinate systems, but please remember 
the energy which is independent of the coordinate representation will not be different between different coordinate system. How you represent your coordinates should not lead to any changes in the eigen value for the hydrogen electron and therefore, we the traditional method is to use the spherical polar coordinates and that allows the wave function to be separated into an R dependent wave function only, a theta dependent wave function only and a phi dependent wave function only. If you recall the particle in the two dimensional box where we had an x y dependent wave function being separated into an x only wave function term and an y only wave function term and we were able to get the energies and the solutions etcetera. Therefore, separation of variables is far more detailed here in the case of hydrogen atom and let me stop with this as the focal point for the next part of the lecture on what is called the substitution of the wave function in terms of the three radial only polar theta angle dependent only and azimuthal angle phi dependent only functions and how we separate this into three different equations. We will not solve them, but in the second part we will look at the solution and in the third part we will see some physical representations of the wave functions themselves, the real and the imaginary parts. So, let me stop with part 1 here, we will continue exactly from this in the next part. Until then, thank you.